Hi, I'm James Dunn. Welcome to the Inside Network. Welcome to In Depth, brought to you by the Inside Network. And my guest today is Arnaud Brillois, Managing Director and Lead Portfolio Manager of the Global Convertible Bonds Team at Lazard Asset Management. Hello, Arnaud. Hello, James. I'm very happy to be with you today. It's our pleasure. Arnaud, for our Australian listeners, can you explain the difference between a convertible bond and, say, a preference share or hybrid as, as we know them in this country? Uh, the, the, there are a lot of differences, but the main difference is the fact that in a convertible bond, it is you, the investors, that decide to convert, and you will do it when the equity is going up. At the opposite, uh, for a hybrid bond, uh, you will be converted at the worst period, at the worst time when things are going very badly for the firm that has issued them. So it is the main difference. There are other differences. Convertible bonds are issued by many different kinds of companies, uh, when hybrid are issued mostly by financial uh, companies. The coupon is fixed for convertible bonds. It is uh, floating for uh, the hybrid bonds. And uh, they are very liquid. Convertible bonds are very liquid when hybrid bonds have a lower liquidity, for example. Why would a company issue this type of security compared to equity or traditional bonds? Uh, uh, a company will issue a convertible bond for several reasons. First, to diversify its investors. Secondly, because it allows the company to do a deferred increase of capital at a fixed price if a convertible bond is converted at redemption. And third reasons would be to decrease its refinancing rate if a convertible bond is not converted at uh, maturity. So three main reasons uh, and different kinds of companies will use uh, a convertible bond. From your CV, Arno, it appears that you've spent most of your career specializing in convertible bonds. So what, what drove you to specialize in this, for lack of a better term, niche in uh, part of global capital markets? Yeah, how will you become a convertible bond manager? In fact, it was my boss, my first boss, it was my mentor and he was, uh, really crazy about convertible bonds. And he convinced me to, to become a convertible bond manager because he was thinking that a convertible bond was something that was totally complete. Uh, you have uh, to study the equity, you have to study the credit, you have to have a view on the interest rate, on volatility, on currency. So when you manage that asset, asset class, you have to, to, to have a view on everything's in the financial markets just in order to, to manage it and to optimize your portfolio. You've been running the global convertible strategy at Lazard since 2008. Obviously, you've been through several major economic and market crises in that time. How did the sector perform in 2020 compared to past experiences? It has been a very, a very good period for convertible bond, in fact. Uh, they have not disappointed. Uh, in 2008 or in 2002, convertible bonds have been performing well, a lot better than equity, but not as well as we could expect. And in 2020, not only they have amortized and protected when the equity market was going down, but they have been rebounding very quickly and capture a large part of the equity uh, rebound. It was among the first asset class uh, to come back to positive performance year to date. Global convertibles will be new to most Australian investors. So could you explain the unique risk reward payoff of this asset class? Yes, indeed, uh, convertible bonds are uh, uh, between equity and uh, bond and fixed income world but the risk return profile is not, not the one of equity and is not the one of fixed income. Uh, over the long run, convertible bond will have uh, the return of equity with a lower volatility, 50% yeah, of the volatility to two thirds of the volatility of equity. Yeah. And at the same time, so it will have a higher volatility than uh, the fixed income, the, the high yield bonds, but with a better return. So uh, indeed, a uh, risk return profile that is between uh, equity and fixed income and totally specific to the asset class. 
Perhaps a case study would be appropriate. You've spoken about Tesla and a number of other fast growing companies in the past. How have their convertible bonds compared in performance to their equity in recent years? Tesla is a perfect candidate for convertible bond because of its volatility. And if we take the time the convertible bond has been launched in March 2017 to the, the, the drawdown, the, the downside of Tesla in June 2019, when Tesla was losing 29.8%, the convertible bond was just losing 4.6%. So the downside to capture was around 15.4%, so 1.5%. Uh, At the opposite, if you take the performance of Tesla between March 2017 and as of today, the 20th of October, uh, the performance is, uh, of Tesla is 741, when the convertible bond is 611%. So for the convertible bond has captured 82.4% of the upside capture. And I know with share markets uh, near recent highs and arguably late stage highs and, and, and traditional or normal bond yields closing in on zero, should 60, 40 investors be more worried about their equity or, or their bond allocations? And, and, and in that, what role can convertibles play in helping investors to achieve the return objectives they have? Convertible bond may be very useful in uh, that kind of uh, allocation. And I think that investors should consider convertible bond and have a look on the way they are behaving because of two things. First, convertible bond have a strong diversification power. They are highly correlated to equity, moderately correlated to credit spread, and very sl small correlation to interest rate. And secondly, there is return profile that is uh, better than equity over the long run with a lower volatility and better than uh, bond in terms of uh, return, but with a little higher volatility will allow for many investors to reach in a better way their, uh, their target. Can you provide an example of the kinds of companies that are issuing convertible bonds and, and, and those that you're seeking to invest into? Currently, there are two, two kinds of companies that are issuing convertible bonds, and they are at the opposite. They are the growth companies that are issuing convertible bonds because they want their equity to go up and the convertible bond to be in the money and at maturity to pay you back with new equity instead of using the cash that is in the balance sheet. At the same time, with the COVID crisis, we have a lot of recovery companies, companies in a very bad shape that are doing the same. They are issuing a convertible bond for having the convertible bond in the money at redemption and using new equity instead of using the cash. In one, in one case, it is to invest everything in the capex. In the other case, it is to avoid to jeopardize their future. So both of that kind of companies are using the convertible bond, are, are very interesting for us investors to invest in because they have exactly the same interest as you for uh, having the equity going up and the convertible bond in the money. So how has the convertible bond asset class compared in performance to your expectations? Uh, they have not disappointed. This year, uh, uh, year to date, uh, uh, as of the 20th of October, the performance of convertible bond in in OZ is around 14%. So it's not only the positive performance year to date, it's the way things has been going during the COVID crisis. They have protected when the equity market was going down and they have been rebounding very quickly when the equity market has been going up and being among the first asset to recover and to be in the positive performance year to date. I know with reference to some examples, are you seeing more or less opportunities coming out of the pandemic? And in reference to the quality of those opportunities, are, are they worse quality or, or, or better quality than normal? There are a lot more opportunities. Uh, thanks to the primary market that has been very strong, I think that we are going to have a record year in terms of new issuance. And when you have a strong primary market, you have... Uh, new blood, uh, new sectors that will allow you to have a more active uh, management. And not only you have new sectors and new firms, but you have uh, a source of convexity. 
And convexity is very important for convertible bond because it is one of the specific features of convertible bond. The fact that it will capture uh, a large part of the equity going up and it will protect in case the equity is going down. So just uh, summing up, Arno, if, if there's really good value in the, in the convertible bond space, they're, they're, they're cheap, they're, they're, they're high return, they're low risk, they protect your downside, they capture a lot of the upside. It sounds too good to be true. So what is the catch for people looking at convertible bonds? Of course, there is always a, a catch. There is no, never a, a free lunch. Uh, convertible bonds are bond and they, they can go to bank route. You can have a, a default on a convertible bond. So everything is, is good right now. There is a lot of money in the market, but a large part of our portfolio management is to be sure that we won't have any defaults and to try to avoid uh, the future default that has been postponed by all the cash that has been in, injected in the, in the market. I know clearly uh, as traditional bonds uh, grind ever closer to zero in, in that market, is the popularity of convertible bonds really happening because investors are prepared to accept a little more risk to eke out a few more basis points in yield? Yes, indeed, uh, uh, you're totally right. When you buy a convertible bond, you, uh, you have to pay for the embedded options and the possibility to convert the convertible bond. So indeed, you will give a few bips in order to get the possibility to make uh, some, uh, some money when the equity is going up. But it's not only to take more risk, it's to, to, to be more protective because compared to an equity, when you buy a convertible bond, you are uh, protected if equity is going down by the bond component of a convertible bond. So it's not only to take more risk, but it is to take more risk and knowing that potentially you will be protected if the equity is going down by the bond part embedded in the convertible bond. So clearly a lot of the attraction for investors is that they can choose when or if they convert, but is, is the mandatory convertible bond a major part of the market? It wouldn't seem that it would give the investors as much um, benefit as, as the usual convertible bond, but it would, it would uh, help companies. In fact, we, we don't like them. Uh, indeed, mandatory convertible bond force you, whatever happened, to get some equity at the end, at the redemption of a convertible bond. We are not investing in them because they have a, a lower liquidity than most of the other convertible bonds. So for, indeed, mandatory is not the, the, the convertible bond that we, we really like. We prefer plain vanilla a convertible bond. But there is a secret that convertible bond managers are never telling to anybody is the fact that normally, normally, if you want to take your profit on a convertible bond, you do not convert, you sell it. Because if you convert a convertible bond before the maturity, you will lose the time value of money. So it's always better to sell a convertible bond and take your profit. I know you mentioned before that um, uh, companies use these securities to diversify their investor base. And that made me want to ask, uh, do you expect to see more Australian companies come into this field? We, we've seen a few, Zero, for example, the, the um, New Zealand-based accounting software group, and, and their convertible bond, they did get a lot of uh, Asian and European investors that they hadn't reached before. So we have a lot of high growth companies. You, you've got the, the market that's really um, going well. So do you expect to see more companies from down this part of the world uh, come into your market? Yes, and I would be very happy if there were more uh, Australian companies that were issuing convertible bonds. Uh, in, of course, there are some trends. Sometimes uh, underwriters are not proposing convertible bonds to their clients. Sometimes uh, you just need one or two companies to issue convertible bonds to trigger over new, new issue. And I'm sure and I strongly believe that the Australian market could be very active. And we just have to wait a little that the company uh, assess and compute and uh, dis discover again that asset class that is very interesting in terms of diversification of uh, investors and debtors. So the market, uh, to sum it up, works for both the issuer and the investor? Normally, a good convertible bond is, uh, is, uh, is an asset that works for both. 
And uh, the, the best uh, part of that, uh, of a convertible bond is when the issuer and the investors have exactly the same target, uh, getting the equity up. And it's, uh, most of the, it's most of the time the case for growth companies or recovery companies. Thank you, Anna Boulois. Thank you, James.